All right, guys, John from the basement checking in. We're actually at the running room here in the south end of Sudbury. I'm here with Eric Leishman. Um, Eric, I'm going to toot his horn for just a, a couple seconds. Eric is an incredibly distinguished runner, uh, not just locally, but actually on a national level. Um, and so we've come to him for hopefully some expert guidance when it comes to selecting <laughs> footwear. So Eric, so I mean, uh, tell us maybe a little bit about the running room and kind of what it is that you guys are trying to do here in the, the south end of Sudbury. Uh, so basically we have training programs that uh, prepare people for different distances from your learn to run all the way up to the marathon from your beginner to your expert basically. Um, but for the footwear purposes, we have three different styles of running shoes here. So your neutral um, foot pattern shoe for someone that has high arch, um, something in the stability, which is your blue foot pattern that has um, that someone has a more lower arch or low profile shoe, uh, like foot type, and then your red foot pattern, that is someone that's completely uh, flat footed. So we're gonna get John to do a gait analysis for me. Cool. Uh, so if I can get you to take off your shoes there, and I'll just get you to walk. So a couple of things too, I think guys, that uh, and part of the reason we wanna do this partnership with the running room is when you're coming to select your footwear, yeah, it's one thing to just come in and check out a wall, but I think it's also another thing to actually be able to come in and actually get properly fitted, just because, as you know, the equipment is what's going to dictate your comfort while you're running and hopefully reduce injury. Yeah, absolutely. All right, buddy, get me all set here, man. If, if I can't beat you at the end of this <laughs> by getting me outfitted, then these are the wrong shoes. All right, so if I get you to just walk towards the cash there. Okay. All right, I'll get you to turn around there. So basically what I'm looking for is if his foot is turning inward, and it is, so... Uh, John is going to need some support built into his shoe. So basically, I'm just going to pick sock me here. So basically what I'm looking for is uh, the arch pattern here from the back of your heel, uh, the front of your heel to the front of your arch um, to support your foot. So basically John's foot is, you can see here that when he steps, his arch is actually collapsing. So, so why is that though? Like, is, that, is that something with my training or what's the... No, uh, that's just body type. So like it could, like you are right. It could be uh, your footwear that you've been wearing um, because you're, you're more uh, in the gym yeah. and doing well, a lot of weights and, and stuff like that. Shoe versus Minim something. Yeah, minimalist shoe. Uh, it can be just, uh, just your, your body type uh, and the training that you're doing. In the case of my arch, um, I have a very high arch. Uh, higher than most. So basically when my foot strikes the ground, my arch absorbs the impact and allows me to put less stress on my body. Um, so I would need something in the yellow foot pattern that doesn't necessarily have as much arch support uh, because my body just doesn't need it. So when you, people come in to actually purchase shoes, so let's say that you're coming into uh, to this location, I mean, obviously they come, they come meet with yourself or someone else that, uh, you know, the, the, the handling the, the sell of shoes. Yep. That's something they're gonna coach you, you know, they're gonna be coached through though. That's not yep. on you guys to know, to know no, um, absolutely any, not. any of that. But uh, like for training wise and, and, and to, to accompany all of our resistance training and our own workouts, Mm -hmm. I know a lot of our members are starting to get a little more involved with either, you know, the coach to 5k stuff, starting to add a little bit of extra cardio or conditioning into their own uh, daily work or into their own weekly workouts. We also have a lot of people that have done either the Tough Mudder races or they're preparing for like a, one of those other Spartan races or one of the outdoor obstacle courses. Mm -hmm. What sort of thing, because I mean, I'm not going to wear just like a traditional minimalist shoe for that training. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I know even for myself when I was doing longer runs start to get a little bit of ankle pain or, you know, some knee pain, some lower back pain, hip pain, things like that. Um, if I'm really like pounding long kilometers out. So what sort of different styles of shoes would we, we'd be kind of looking at? Yeah, for the Spartan races and stuff, I've got a, a Brooks Cascadia here. So basically what this shoe is designed, the upper is actually a Gore-Tex waterproof upper. Uh, and then the bottom of the shoe has a little bit more of an aggressive tread to it. Oh yeah, so substantially better than, I mean, that's my minimalist shoe like that, that can make you free. Yeah, so and basically um, the medial support here, this is classified as a neutral uh, shoe, but because it's a trail shoe, it, you, you can't really bend it, um, and it, uh, it has that support more than a traditional neutral shoe. Whereas, uh, yeah, if you can oh, just yeah, take off, 
Uh, so basically, um, you can basically, like it has no support, but it's built for its own purpose. It's built for the gym. It's built for that, uh, any kind of jumps, yeah. uh, but it's not traditionally something that you would Pop run in. in. Yes, absolutely. So that guy there, now I, I hear talking about, it, 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 it's, it's ideal for doing like an obstacle course, one of those Spartan races, better traction. But would that also be good for like a like a hiking shoe or like a, a trail running shoe, something like Abs that? Absolutely. That's typically that's the the use that it's uh, to used for. for okay. Is it's a trail shoe, but uh, because of the the mud, the water, a lot of people are looking for something that uh, it's going to get rid of the waters as soon as you get out of the water. Okay. So like um, that. It, it's Gore-Tex, so it's waterproof. So okay. something like that's that. That's the way to go then. Yeah. So if I'm just an average, I'm just average Joe, but somebody, you know, I'm now just, I'm running the sidewalks, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the pavement, I'm hitting the streets. What sort of style of shoe might I, <clears throat> might I be looking for there? Or what sort of features in a shoe might I be looking for? All right, so your your high cushion support shoe for yourself, John. Uh, so something in the blue foot pattern, what we do typically, what I do is uh, bring out like three different brands, uh, so like it really, once we do the gain analysis, it, it comes down to kind of personal preference and okay. feel, um, your higher cushion shoes, um, in each brand would be kind of up the, the alley there. Okay. Um, so like, and then it, it bases on a, uh, five figure, um, either cushion support system. So like this sock knee here, for example, is a four out of four for all of it. Uh, whereas this Cayano is five and five for the sport and cushion. So it would be your highest rated cushion and support shoe. Um, so like when you're pounding the pavement for a long time, that's what you're looking for. It's a uh, good standard trainer okay. that has support built into it for yourself. So how often should I be looking at changing these out? Like I know a lot of, I hear a lot of people, you know, they start running their high kilometers and maybe they're running the same sneakers they've had since high school or you know, like mm -hmm. the same gym shoe they've had for, for a decade. Yeah, I mean, when do you know it's kind of wearing out? Like, what are some maybe some telltale or like, what would be some some times to to change the shoe out? So a lot of times, uh, the basis is either five to eight hundred kilometers if you're keeping track of the your mileage on your shoe, or uh, up to a year. You know, like okay. if you're running three four times a week, kind of interchanging with the um, training in the gym and running outside in preparation for some sort of a trail race or Spartan race then typically you're good for up to a year. Okay, okay. So, and then uh, I, I, I know like a lot, I am getting luckily from, from past clients that have also uh, done resistance training in, in conjunction with running. People seem to really, you know, it's like knees or, or shins, you know, maybe ankles a little bit. Sometimes your toes, especially from people who are like long runners, is there yeah. something like that's even like a step up from just your traditional shoe that may help them in the early stages or, or might help them out? Uh, so like there is actually a new brand out there uh, called Hoka 1-1. So it's actually built uh, on a rocker sole. So what it's doing is at the, the rear of the shoe and the forefoot, what it's doing is it's taking the pressure off the traditional pressure points. So if you're traditionally a heel striker, which about 80% of yes. people are, what it's doing when you put on the shoe, you're almost leaning forward. Okay. So like you don't have a heel on this shoe, but it's also a Maximus cushion shoe. So something like this is a lot thicker throughout the midsole than a traditional shoe. And it's gonna have just more cushion throughout the shoe as well as for yourself, it still has that support built into the shoe. Awesome, so I think some of the, so this is the keys that I'm kind of hearing, I don't know if you agree with this. So when it comes to selecting your own footwear, I mean, I think number one, you gotta see a, a, a professional because it's one thing to go in and just, you know, you look at shoes it's like, oh, I like to look at that, but especially when it comes to something specialized like running, I think it comes down to, uh, you know, having somebody select the right shoe for your foot gate. I would assume, you know, uh, when you're selecting the actual footwear, then also comfort too. I mean, yes. I think that, uh, you know, you, you gotta try it out and you actually have to see how it feels. Because yeah, we, we could have basically the same setup of, of, of foot and gate, but we might like completely different things though too. Absolutely, yeah. Different brands fit differently. Uh, different widths. If you need a wider shoe, that would be a different brand yeah. for a different foot type. Cool, cool. So now my last question is, how can I become as good a runner as you? <laughs> how can I finally keep up? I'm pretty sure if we did a 5K race, I'd have to spot you about 13 minutes, and then it might be like it might be a, uh, somewhat close. But uh, uh, that that that'd be a 
it just keep training there, John. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so guys, if uh, you do have any questions, you want some more information, or you are looking uh, to, to up your, your shoe game, um, I'm gonna put all the, the information down below so they can obviously find you guys and get a hold of uh, Eric and the rest of the crew here at the running room in Sudbury. Awesome, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate uh, the time helping us out in terms of getting some, some proper footwear selected. But uh, guys, if you have any other uh, comments, any other questions, any other videos you might wanna see, make sure you like, subscribe in the video and uh, reach out to us or feel free to reach out to, to Eric at, uh, at the crew here at the running room. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll get, uh, you know, we'll get us uh, all, all suited up and ready to rock and roll. Sounds good. All right, thanks buddy.